Hello everyone, it is the time again, the time of the year where I talk about the games of the year and specifically the games that I played in the year, not not the games that came out the year because who fucking cares about new releases? I mean, there's probably some new releases in here, but no, actually I think it's mostly old stuff. Which is, it makes sense, you know, because... I think the sweet spot is like two or three years after release because that's when the price is low but the game is still really holding up. <laughs> so here is my list of, of top 10 actually 11 however games that I've played this year. That I really... Yes. That are, that are good which is the point of a list. The list of top games. The games that I played that are good. Jesus, I went on a ramble there. Alright, here we go. We've got Rise of the Tomb Raider at 11. That's 11 of 10. Yep, that's what we're doing. Rise of the Tomb Raider. It's a good game. You, you play the Lara. You swing. You climb. Is it as good as the Tomb Raider that it came out in the previous three years ago? Uh, hard to tell. I think it's it may be slightly less good. Uh, yeah, it's hard to tell. It has a very anticlimactic ending, and it was pretty short. I remember the the original reboot being a bit longer, so I I'm confused. And also, I even I even bought the DLC, and I I guess the DLC is good, which means that the base game is even worse. Ah, uh, all right. Well, damn me, huh? I guess that's. A pretty low bar. Why am I even putting two? I guess I enjoyed it a little bit. Yeah, it was good. It's a good let's play. But more importantly, Tomb Raider 3, which I'm not putting on this list because I actually played it last year, but apparently it didn't make it on last year's list, which is terrible because now I'm just filled with nostalgia for Tomb Raider 3 because Tomb Raider 3 is amazing. Look at these graphics. Look at these, these pixel tits. Look at all this. Oh my god, the nostalgia bono is raging, but let's not talk about that, because that's not... F I played that last year. It's not, not even on the list. So here we go, finally. 10. Battle Riot. Battle Riot is basically what would happen if you had League of Legends, and then you remove all the stupid grinding, and... Well, you basically get like one minute long games. <laughs> and then it's just... It's just characters that use their abilities. There's more abilities than in League of Legends, but they they don't have mana, I guess. They only have a cooldown. So basically it's about spamming your abilities as efficiently as possible. And then there's some characters that counter other characters. And it's... Uh, I, I, I guess it's hard to tell. Is it better than... No, it's definitely not better than League of Legends. What am I even talking about? It, it was a fad for me. I played it for a while. Now I don't play it anymore. It it was good. I I got addicted for a while, but now I'm bored of it. And it's not like League of Legends where you can build up a skill and you will retain the skill. Because knowing the game isn't half the battle. In this game, it's all about what is it even about? I guess it's just really really hard. I, I guess people just really outplay you and when you just take a little break from it you'll be completely confused because you, you won't remember what what's good and what's not. So Battle Right is a, a game that's that's got some good skill to it, but then it doesn't have I I guess I kinda like the grinding. Ah that sucks, doesn't it? Hmm. It's like in, in in League of Legends, there's this build-up where it's just basically pointless farming, but then in the well, you're still gonna make sure not to to die stupidly, or else you'll lose eventually. But then th there's all this build-up and deliberation about the end game, and then everyone has to play together in the end. At first, they're just farming individually, and then they're they're building up. In this game, there's none of that. In this game, it's just just kill each other and stuff, and that's it. And it was pretty good, but I'm I got bored of it. I I still remember playing it a lot, though it was, it it was a good addiction for a while. I guess you you gotta tell me if you like it. 
All right, number nine, The Surge. Yeah, you wouldn't expect that, would you, out of my five out of ten review? But I guess I still <coughs> still enjoyed playing it. <coughs> it was still a very unique experience compared to other games. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, even though it is a Dark Souls clone, it's a, and it is full of flaws, it was still kind of enjoyable. I guess it's no Dark Souls 3 or anything. Not even sure it can hold a candle to Dark Souls 2, and that's a piece of shit game. <laughs> but yeah, The Surge, I guess it's a game. It's number 9. Number 8, Bioshock Remastered. I actually didn't even finish this one because I just started playing it like... Uh, a week ago, but it's actually really good. I I always I was always cross with Bioshock, the original one. Fuck Infinite, by the way, just the original Bioshock, because it's basically well, what is it even? What what is? I guess it's hailed as this great masterpiece, but it doesn't play that well. And then eventually. I always ended up with a corrupt safe game, so I, never, I don't even know what's gonna happen. I'm, I'm like further now than I ever was. I don't even know how how much further I have to go. Yeah, I guess I'll see. But yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess. Originally, I thought it's a game where where everything costs money and the bullets cost money and the health packs cost money, and then once you're in a in a dead hole, you be fucked forever, just like in real life. But then. That's not even true, because only at the second or third level it ends up that, that you have money everywhere and you can afford all the things that you need. And there's only a limit to how much money you can carry, so there's no need to collecting anymore. I mean, there is a need, but there's no, no need to save it. You just want to spend it on health and ammo, obviously. So, basically... I guess it's a decent game. You know, the 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 characters are very interesting. I really like listening to the audio logs and everything. The insanity is very nice, and it runs so good now too. Because originally, I when it first came out, it didn't run well at all on my computer, and it was a big blurry piece of shit. And when you when you'd get hit, and the whole screen would turn blurry with that bloody texture. And it was really poorly scaling on my tiny, tiny monitor that I had at the time. <laughs> yeah, it. I guess it was like a 720 monitor. How crazy is that, eh? Man, what a time. What, what, what advances have been made. So now it's beautiful. It's Apparently the remastered version is like four times more gigabytes on your hard drive. So it's almost like a, a modern game and it's really beautiful. And it it's not got all of all of that garbage that weighs down Bioshock Infinite, which is like escort. Wait, no, it's not escort missions. I don't know, man. It's I just hated Infinite so much. I don't know why. Maybe I. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Well, it's probably the characters. In, in Bioshock, you can kill everyone, and that's what I like about it. <laughs> You just kill everyone, but in Infinite you got all these stupid characters that you gotta to listen to, and you go to the city and they, they they make you throw a ball at the at the <laughs> at the racist stereotypes and oh my god, what evil people are these? There's always people. There's always living people that that you're not supposed to kill in that game. It's not not what I like about Bioshock. I like to kill everyone. All right. <laughs> Except for little girls, I guess I go 50-50 on killing them or, or rescuing them. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, Bioshock Remastered, good game, get it, get it now or whatever, I don't care. Number 7, Tricky Towers, look at that, you've probably seen me play it. It's a good game, where you, it, it's like Tetris but not gay. No, actually Tetris isn't gay, what am I talking about? Tricky Towers. Actually, this is more gay than Tetris, if anything. Look at those characters. Look at those wizards. They, they go like, Patoo! Pata! Wizards! Abracasabra! And then they, 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 they do crazy things, like make blocks that, that are magically stuck in the air, which is really convenient, considering you're trying to build a tower out of physics blocks. 
<laughs> you gotta use those magic swells to make sure you can go higher. Well, it's amazing actually, Tricky Towers. It's got this this whole concept that I never thought was going to be possible, which is to have physics that work really well in a game like this. Because you ever try stacking boxes in a game with physics? It's not going to work <laughs> because the well, you know how how it's like balancing a pencil on its tip. Because all the boxes, they push against each other normally. And they, they got this... So every little bump that happens at the bottom of the of the pile is just going to be amplified massively towards the top. And that way, when you build a tower out of physics boxes in a game, it's going to go left and right wildly until it falls over. But not in tricky towers, because... I, I don't know, either they've made perfect physics... Or they, they're cheating in a way that they, they're freezing the tower if it's off screen or something. But I don't think they're doing that because I've had cases where <coughs> flimsy towers actually collapsed after I've gotten really high up. And then they collapsed <coughs> from from the middle and then it was just like, oh my god, I, d I don't even know what's happening. So, suddenly my tower's falling out of falling out from under me. It didn't really communicate very well what happened to me. It just looked like it was uh, some weird game over, but it actually made sense because I know that it was really flimsy there. So basically it's a really good game about stacking towers and amazingly it actually has a, a good multiplayer where you can, you can play online against people and then it's like a, a race and then you get little power-ups where you can either do a useful spell for yourself or you can curse your other players with with a, a, an evil spell and it's crazy. It's got all kinds of cool things and it's really good. You should try it. It's a cheap game. It's a good game. Number six. The Settlers 7 actually. <laughs> it's, it's the the Settlers 7. It's on play 6. Yep, that's that's a thing that happens. So I bought the Settler 7 when they first came out, which by the way, not a great deal. It cost me like 50 euro. This is exactly why I tell you that old games are better. Now you can get it for 20 euros and it's still about as good as it was. You could even get the DLC and it'll still be less than 50 euros. Imagine that. There we go. We already got fucking microtransactions and on 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 disc DLC, but whatever, it's a good game regardless. We got, well, it's, I don't know how much you know about Settlers. I, I played again the Settlers 4 as well, but it was a, a laggy piece of shit that crashed all the time. So Settlers 7, however, runs really well and it's actually kind of addicting, even though it seems to have some weird glitches where, where the water wouldn't be distributed to certain farms that but only certain farms, it was very odd. But on general, it's a really good game. And in theory, it's a really good game because I like the this trinity of, of commerce that they've got. So they got the war, they got the, the church and the market. So basically, you can build a church and then you can research technologies that allow your buildings to work better. Or you could build the marketplace that you can use to trade away your goods that you've created with your buildings to, to get other goods. And then you can build armies to take over sectors that belong to other players and thus getting goods that way, I guess. But it also costs goods to create an army, obviously. So you got these three f factors and you can choose if you want to do all three of them, or if you want to do just one of them. I mean, usually you do a bit of all, but it's still a very good concept in 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 theory. Well, it's it actually works out fairly well, even though it, it's kind of weird playing against the AI, because they're really good at like doing the first levels of, of a thing, but then they're not good at, at upgrading to the second level. Hmm. Yes, I'm getting into the details here, aren't I? Basically, this it's it's like the old Settlers game, but now it's a more advanced age, more a more 
I, I, I almost said industrious, but I don't think this is industry, and I think this is just a more a more advanced age, anyways, where when our peace is viable and you don't you don't have to kill the other people anymore, which is interesting, I guess, because now you can just get all the research points and you can get all the the trading points and you never have to to attack anyone, and you can buy stuff to to. To, to buy security that way you can I mean I guess you'd still buy an army eventually because it, eventually you, you'll need an army but there's also ways to to get an army by by like like buying help from from a, a drang or something crazy there's all kinds of stuff that's going on there and this isn't a game it's not the, the the usual Settlers game where it's just one big map. Now the map is cut up into sectors and each sector has certain things on it. You can take over the whole sector but you can't take just a bit of it. So you're gonna... The, the only way you're gonna take over the sector is by, by walking in there and you're gonna go right to that stronghold that the other player or the... If there's not a player, the the other thing... Uh, the, the barbarians, you gotta kill them, or you gotta bribe them, or you gotta... What was the Christian thing called? Being a missionary? You convert them, right. Even though I guess... I don't know, what happens... What happens if you convert them? I guess they, they cease to be soldiers, I guess they become peaceful and you, you have the sector, but then you probably wanna go there pretty quick and build your defenses, otherwise anyone else could just waltz in and take it over. <laughs> So you don't get to send out your army in in very specific ways. You can only send them along the, the main roads, which kind of makes sense because on the main roads they will travel the fastest. And then the fortifications, they're always built so that they're like on the main roads, but there's still walls all around. So it makes sense and it's a, a really interesting take on, on the, whole, the whole genre. It's like in between real time and turn based and apparently it wasn't received that well and I'm one of the few people who really like it and that's too bad because then they went and made Settlers Online which is a hot piece of shit that, that needs to die. It's basically like what you could imagine Dungeon Keeper the phone game to be but worse. So, so never look into Settlers Online by the way just to be sure. <laughs> All right. Number five. Oh my god, did I just talk seven minutes about that? <laughs> Whatever. I should really speed this up, shouldn't I? Ah, who cares? You got time to listen to me ramble about my games, right? This is why you came anyways. I mean, you specifically came, but I could still make this video short. But now it's too late to make the video short. What am I even doing with my time? Well, go to Viking. Number five. <laughs> we got the Viking. But he's a Viking in name only because he is a complete pansy. He, when he as, as much as stubs his toe twice, he will die. He is the worst Viking in history, and there is the challenge of the game, is controlling the biggest retard that you could imagine, basically like Dark Souls, because in Dark Souls your character is really stupid as well. He'll swing and miss, even though the, the enemy is right in front of you, and it's quite obvious what you meant by pressing attack. Nope, he's too stupid to do anything. And this game, yeah, your character's pretty stupid, but it's 2D, so it's different. And it's definitely different than Dark Souls because, well, it's, uh, there's things to it. So basically every time you get hit, you lose a piece of equipment, sometimes even two. So at the most, I think you can have like three health points. And then you get a little invulnerability once you've taken damage, but it's really short, so there's absolutely no mercy and the best way to play the game is to never get hit because that means you, you'll get to keep your your flaming sword and that means you can kill everything real fast but it's pretty hard to do that because the the level is really full of of real crazy bullshit that that is just literal bullshit it's like so much bullshit stacked up that you you can't stop but get your your feet filthy and then 
And you're gonna take off your shoes because they're filthy. And now, no, you're gonna die now because you're a naked Viking and you got hit by a spike. Oh no. Yeah, literally everything can kill you. And not, it doesn't even have to actually hit you, no. But this, this game has the worst hitboxes the, that any game that has come out in this millennium has. Everything is a fucking box. Even things that are really big. And if you look at this fucking Reaper, you would not believe how incredibly large his stupid hitbox is. You, you see, like, he, he's, he's basically like a diamond shape. Because he's got a cloak and he's got arms to stretch out. So basically, that's the that's what, if the game developers weren't retarded, they would have given him a, a round hitbox. But they are retarded, so they gave him a a box, an actual box, and that means that if you make a triangle and add that triangle to the left. Left and right of him, it, it, it basically gives him like a... God, what am I even explaining here? This is... You, you know how you... Well, it's basically the largest and most inconvenient hitbox that you could assume. And every time, you just mildly in its vicinity, and you've not even hit it yet, but it's come there with its incredibly large hitbox, it's gonna get you. And I don't even... Why did I, why did I put this game here on this list? It's a good game, but it's also the worst game ever. It's it's such a conundrum. You know, there's a lot of shit games on this list. Huh. Why did I... Well, I guess we're only on five, but... Damn, these games better get better. I know they get better, but damn. Anyways, this game, despite being a horrendous piece of shit... He, by the way, this the same boss I was talking about. He also shoots out fireballs that have the same problem. That all just, like... They, they look like small balls, but what they really are is huge, huge boxes. And the the tips of the boxes, they can they can stab into your tip of your hitbox and they'll hit you from a mile away when they shouldn't. And it's wild. And you gotta watch out. You gotta watch out for it. But then again, the game is really good because it's so skill-based. It's really... I mean, the, the game takes two hours to comp... No, it doesn't even. I think I, sp I speed run the game in like 40 minutes. It was crazy. So basically, you can get through it real fast, but if you get hit, you might want to restart or, well... I mean, you're gonna have to restart. There's a lot of instant killing stuff as well. And if you lose your sword... Your flaming sword. You you might be stuck wailing at the boss for half an hour. So, yeah, it's quite annoying. But it's also... I don't know. It's just so fascinating how good you can get at a shit game. <laughs> you can get so good at a shit game. And then you can actually go and beat the red dragon. Which is fucking insane. Even though the, the dragon itself isn't that bad. But everything leading up to it is just so bad. Oh, Jesus. And and every level has a new type of bullshit that you wouldn't even believe. Because at, at first you've got these lizard people, and they're, they're basic. But then, just the next level, I mean, the lizard people, they run at you and swing. And you can duck and you can block. But then the next level, you got... Everything is different. Now you've got these, these frog people that have spears. So you can't hit them with your sword, because their spear is longer than your sword. Oh my fucking god, what a mechanic. So so basically you gotta throw your spear, but because you're a retard, you can only throw your spear straight in front of you, and you can't aim it up or down. So, yeah, the game becomes difficult, even though most of the time the enemies will be lined up for you. It's only, only a few more levels later when you will find the same enemies, but now they're lined up in a way that makes them really hard to kill. Because you can actually see that there is a bit of mercy that's gone into this merciless game, but it just fades away the closer to the end you get, and everything is just bullshit at the end. Oh my god. But it... I, I don't know, I still got really addicted to it, and it was really fun for a while, but now and then when I get back to it, I, I just can't do it so much anymore. It There's just too much bullshit to it, but... God, I, I must have played for like... 30 hours, and then I, I got a really good and and, and bad run it in 40 minutes, and that was such an achievement. 
And now I try to play it and I don't even get that far. <laughs> Most of the time. It's real wild. You gotta... Oh yeah, and then... The, the, list, uh, the, the, the frog people, that's not even the end. That's just the basic ones. That's the green ones. Now, the, the list of people, it would take two hits. The, uh, the, the blue ones would take two hits. I mean, the, first, the green ones take one hit. The blue ones take two hits. The red ones take three hits. But, oh my god. The, the frog people are completely different. The blue ones, they jump upwards. The, the green ones, they just stand around and, and hit you if you try to melee them. But then, the, I mean, they, they've got a pretty short melee range. I, I mean, they got a good melee range, but they don't move, so they're not that much of a threat. But then the blue ones, they jump up. And the only way you're going to get them is if you time your spear really well, because you can only throw it forward, remember? So you can't throw it in the air where they're going to be. You gotta throw them like in front of you where they're gonna land. And then the red ones are even more insane. They actually charge towards you uh, on the ground and you can't shoot the spear on the ground because you're retarded, as I told you. And so you gotta jump up and, and do the down attack, which is really crazy. So it's, what what a crazy game. So it's really good and really bad at the same time, but I think it's more of a four out of 10, so. I mean, I, I, I got more fun out of it than the, the Surge, but it's not, not as good as the Surge. <laughs> so there you go. Yep. All right. Ah, this one was even longer. Yep, this video is probably going to be really long. Right, so Shadow of War, number four. I actually made a, a review of that one. I made a review of the Surge too. If you haven't seen that, you should check that one out. So Shadow of War, just just watch my review. I guess it it was a good game. I really liked it. Don't listen to the idiots who complain about the loot boxes. It's it's a good game regardless. Let's not get fucking carried away complaining about loot boxes. <laughs> it's a good game. You can kill all of the orcs. The orcs are very interesting. You can take over the orcs, which is interesting, because in the original game it was shit, but now in this game it's good, because now you actually need the orcs to win. I mean, you don't need them that bad, but it helps to have a lot of orcs now, and it's it's not terrible to have orcs, and it, in, in the original game it, it just took away all the challenge when you killed all the orcs, because it just made the game too easy, but this game is now hard enough, and you want to actually keep the orcs... And it's a good game, and try it and tell me what you think. Alright, here we go, number three, Snake Pass. Now this is a game, this is a, my kind of game. I, I think this one's like a 10 out of 10 actually. The only problem is that it's really short. And it's not as hard as it could be because the main challenge is in the controls, and then people I don't know, maybe I'm just really good with physics controls, but apparently... Well, it's also a game for kids, so it's not insanely hard, even though they used to be pretty insane games for kids. This isn't one of them. This is just a game where you're a nice little cartoony snake and you collect water droplets and coins for some reason. And also magical artifacts that, that end the level with magic. <laughs> so basically there's like 20 levels, which is... Pretty insane if you think about it. It's really not enough levels, and then I, I beat the levels, and then I collected all the loot. And the only thing I may have left to do is to to play all the the fast times. But yeah, I, I think I mastered this game pretty well a while ago, but I haven't played it since. So who knows? It's a definitely a good game. You play a snake that has physics, and yeah, that's that. Alright, the end is nigh. Number two, Edmund's game. You made it onto the list, Edmund. Uh, oh, be proud of yourself. You finally made it. You made a game that I, I played on this in this year, and I really liked it. Even though I was pretty close to to quitting on it many times because of <coughs> the extreme frustration, but I still managed to pull through, and it was kind of worth it in the end. And I saw my name there because I was a beta tester and then I had I was in the, the column of people that were thanked and yay it's the the end is nigh and it's great and there's a good song at the end 
that's singing the end is nigh meant. <laughs> and then there's a lot more to collect and I'm done with it, though I'm not gonna collect all the stuff. I mean, maybe sometime, but probably not, it's probably not even. It's too much stuff, I can't collect all the stuff. The Mega Tumors are way too hard to get. <laughs> The bullets may be a bit epileptic. I hope he fixes that at some point. They're like real, real hard to look at, and you're gonna look at them to to avoid them. So it's hard shit, man. But it's a cool game. It's good to see how such a simple game can be so much fun. And I think it's better than Super Meat Boy. But I never got into Super Meat Boy, so maybe that game was good too. Who knows? Probably not as good as this though. All right, and number one, it's the cross out. You probably know this because I played this game excessively on my on my Let's Play channel. <laughs> you can, it, it's a good game. I I make videos about it now and then, but it's not a game that people really are into when it comes to watching videos about it because it's just such a a game that you want to just play. You just want to build your own Mad Max Doomsday vehicle and kill everyone, and that's all you want to do. Even though by kill everyone I mean destroy remote control cars because apparently the game is very child proof and there is no such thing as human murder in it. <laughs> you just destroy cars, that's all. Big old rusty cars with huge guns on them. <laughs> God, look at that, that car I built there, it's like a, a train with guns on it, yep. A train with with miniguns. Cross out is the best game, the best game ever. I don't know, it's really good. <laughs> We've got lots of, I, I even joined a clan on there and it's, I'm playing competitive with with the clan and they, they play against other clans and we've not gotten to a point yet where, where we qualify for the big rewards <laughs> where we eventually get that gun that, <laughs> that that costs basically like five hundred dollars of of real money which you'd have to be an idiot to buy because it's fairly easy to just get money by playing the game i mean currency yes in-game currency you can buy it with in-game currency or you can buy it for real money but there's not even a, a way to buy it you'd have to to buy the currency and then just lots of the currency and then turn the currency into it. <laughs> so yeah, cross out's a good game. Gotta gotta build your own desk car. <laughs> and let's not forget about the honorable mention of Minecraft. Number zero, Minecraft, the bestest best of all the games that bested games. It's a game, it's it's unfair, it's bullshit, it's beautiful. I mean, it is unfair for sure, because he, I, I think at, at optimal skill you only win like 38% of all games or something. I mean, that's an estimate, because me, I get 35% of all games winning, because I'm really good. But um, I don't know, how much could you play if you had some kind of real advanced AI playing it? How many percent would it win? Who would know? I mean, there's, there's a lot of games that are basically not not winnable without having to guess. But then if you guess, there's probably ways that you can be guess better than other ways. I mean, sometimes it is just 50-50 and then you're going to reduce your win rate by something. But then whenever you just play, I mean, when, whenever there's like a, a complex situation at the end, Maybe if you were really smart, you might be able to be better than me. But no, you probably can't. I'm I'm the best at Minesweep. But just look at how, how well I'm playing this. This is not sped up. This is just me playing the game. It's outrageous, isn't it? Just, oh my god, look at me playing this Minesweeper. <laughs> Alright, subscribe for more best games of year X. Get current year, even though by now it's probably past year. Depending on when you watch this. I'm gonna make one of these every year. Gonna check out the games I played this year. <laughs> the game of the years. Bye. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video and stuff. Mm.